All right. Uh, somebody was asking me about settings I was using in uh, in uh, FPSC uh, for my PlayStation games. Obviously, for PlayStation games, that's the only thing it really plays. Uh, so, I'm uh, sorry. There's a little bit of a bug here it's showing two uh, games. It's, it's duplicating the games, but that doesn't matter. Um, so it's kind of, uh, all the settings are fairly different, uh, depends on the game. So I'm just going to show some of the settings that I have. Um, so this, if you press the Y button on the Shield, T this is the Shield TV. If you press the Y button on the Shield T uh, TV controller, um, bring up this menu here. You can also hold down A to bring up this menu as well, but it's easier to press the Y button. Uh, you can also compress your game here, so you can make it smaller. Um, but the thing I'm looking at here right now is video mode. And right now I have OpenGL High Definition selected because it works fine with this game on the Shield TV. Now remember, the Shield TV is a fairly powerful device and can handle all this. Uh, it really can enable anything without worrying that it's going to start lagging or anything like that. So we have open, uh, OpenGL High Definition selected. Uh, if if that doesn't um, if that causes bugs that I can't fix with any of the settings in the game, then I use normally uh, Software High Definition. So that's that. So I'm going to launch the game just to show you the settings. So, in here I have, um, go into the video settings, I have the frame limiter on, uh, no frame skipping. A lot of times frame skipping will cause the game to stutter and stuff like that. Even if, sometimes it's just, even if it's stuttering a bit, it's better without the frame skipping because it'll just make it worse. Uh, I don't know why I selected landscape orientation. It's not like it's going to change, but it's that's more like an OCD thing, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I have off-screen drawing uh, selected just to have more stuff draw. Uh, so down here, alpha multipass. I'm going to explain this one a little bit uh, for some games. There's an issue where things are, they'll have some transparency issues, uh, like in Crash Bandicoot, uh, the, some of the ground will be transparent, and like the peaches, or whatever, I think it's peaches, that, that's in that game, uh, they're transparent, if you select Alpha Multipass, it will fix that issue, uh, on, on devices that aren't as powerful, it will cause a lot of lag, but with the Shield TV, it works just fine. So I have 32-bit rendering and anti-aliasing selected. For those, you have to restart the emulator in order for them to be applied. Uh, I did not select texture filtering. I, I use that in Hydro Thunder because the the textures are very pixelated, and it smooths out the, t the textures in Hydro Thunder and makes the game look a lot better. Um, but it's not necessary in this game. Uh, expand screen width. I've never seen an, a, a difference between that and without selecting that, so I don't even bother. Uh, I thought it would be good for widescreen, but it just doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, so all this I yeah, obviously don't have selected. There's native support for widescreen. I select that for this game. Some games this does not work with. So it's a widescreen hack. It'll let you play your games in widescreen without stretching it. Like right now, you're seeing the image in the background is stretched. I deselected it for a game that doesn't properly support it. It's Crash Bandicoot 2. Um, I wish it was not like system wide. Like if you select it, it, it is selected for all your games. And if you want to have it not stretch or if you want to have the widescreen disabled, you have to go into the settings again and disable it. And then when you have a game that supports widescreen, you have to go back into the settings and, and check it. I wish you could do it per game like a lot of these settings. Also, I don't know why this isn't selected, but there's texture high quality. 
basically that that just you know kind of makes the textures look nicer makes things look neater um, I could have sworn I had that selected already uh, but I didn't but that that worked fine for there that the rest of this stuff um, I don't really use there's one thing here that works with Die Hard 2 and Die Hard Trilogy and that's disable chord check. So if you want to play Die Hard Trilogy, um, uh, Die Hard 2 in Die Hard Trilogy, you select disable chord check. It removes this odd glitch that kind of like in certain areas it, there will be a, a, a kind of big polygon piece of shit, whatever it is, that covers like half the screen. Um, and that enabling disable chord check will uh, fix that glitch for OpenGL. Also, in that game, you do not want to have widescreen selected because it will cause issues um, with the graphics and it will actually cause issues with the hit detection. So that you want to have disabled during that game. The rest of the um, the rest of Die Hard trilogy works fine. It's just that one uh, Die Hard uh, two. So that's kind of um, really all I use here. I don't really touch anything else. Um, so yeah, yeah. Everything else really just seems unnecessary to touch. <laughs> uh, let me see if there's anything in advance though uh, for video settings. Um, well, I have the level of the frame letter limiter set to 60. I don't know that that really makes a huge difference, though. I may even want it on auto. <laughs> I'm just going to select auto because I don't think I see a difference. I don't know. Um, I have uh, that set to 4. don't know if it even does anything. I, I, like, I select things sometimes. I don't even know what they do. So that's kind of... I haven't really noticed anything from any of that stuff. But here I have level of screen drawing set all the way to 4. By default, it's 3. I just set it to 4. Um, everything else I think I would leave alone. Uh, so there's audio. Um, you can change the latency level. So, um, you know, you... you know what latency you want with your audio. If, if the latency is bothering you, you can uh, change that. It doesn't bother me, so <clears throat> I don't. Uh, there's enhanced audio interpolation. It's enabled by default, so I haven't touched any of that. Um, also for paths, uh, let's see. You hit add a scan path. Now this is the path, so if you're using a USB drive, this is the path you're going to want to add to this in order for it to see your um, your USB device, unless you have it set, unless you're using a device that's in USB drive two, I believe. Then you want to just add a two. So that's the path you're going to want to do use to see for FPSC to actually see your games. So that's that's that. Um, okay. Also, when if you select uh, high, the high uh, resolution, uh, high quality textures during the game, it, it normally will screw up your the way your game looks until you reboot the game. Um, that's that. I think that's basically it. Um, yep. Then of course I have to. Uh, I think by default the uh, gamepad, the on-screen gamepad. Uh, was selected. Uh, let me just in the on-screen game head. I don't understand this wording here. They changed the wording, but it doesn't make any sense. Gamepad of the screen, but that's that's what you gotta select. It made sense before, but now it doesn't. Um, there's enable or disable on-screen buttons, but there's also model of the screen's gamepad. Which I, ha I just set to disable, so this way it doesn't show anything. It's a lot easier than disabling each individual button. Um, 
Yeah, and the vibration is unfortunately not has nothing to do with the controller's uh, rumble motors. It has to do with the uh, the if you have a device that has, supports uh, uh, vibration, uh, it it works with that. It's mostly for touching the buttons and shit. So it's kind of trying to give you some kind of feedback from the uh, device when you touch a button. Okay, that's really it. Um. So that, that's that. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah.